The Biden administration will soon start requiring all travelers from China to present a negative COVID-19 test before entering the United States. The requirement will take effect on January 5th. The CDC says it needs it is concerned a surge of coronavirus infections in Beijing could spawn a new and more dangerous variant. But this targeting of one country's travelers is a different approach by President Biden, who once described the 2020 China travel ban by former President Donald Trump as hysterical and xenophobic. Let's discuss now with Fred Flights, vice chairman of the America First Policy Institute Center for American Security. Fred, welcome. Thanks for coming on today. You know, from a health perspective, we know that you can test negative one day and be positive the very next, even within that window, that 48-hour time frame. So given the fact uh, that the president has not been so willing to take on China in the past, what does this say that he's taking this move now? Anna, there's a lot of serious questions here. What you said is true, but given China's record of deception and lack of transparency, we can't be trusting uh, COVID tests administered in China. That's why South Korea and Japan and Italy they are testing Chinese travelers when they land. And that's what the United States should be doing. We can't, we know what happened before. I, I might note that 50% of the travelers on two recent flights to Milan, Italy, were infected with COVID. The Italians are not just testing Chinese citizens when they land. When they are tested positive, they're sequencing the virus for new uh, 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 strains. That's what the U.S. should be doing. That's a serious response. Fred, Vladimir Putin expects to be meeting with the president of China, Xi Jinping, early next year in Moscow. Uh, what, how much is Beijing looking at what's going on right now in Ukraine and as it strategizes what the future will be for Taiwan? You know, it's a complicated relationship. Uh, China wants to support Russia, Russia because it, it does not want to see the U.S. as the primary power. But Russia's worried. I mean, uh, China's worried what's happening in Ukraine. It would like to see this war scaled back. Putin's going to be pressing for more economic aid, for help evading sanctions. So far, President Xi doesn't want to do that. But I think they'll still collaborate as much as possible uh, to oppose the United States. Mm. If we could, let, let's go back again to that surge in COVID cases really quick. Again, you know, the, the United States has seen and experienced surges of cases, but China had a different approach to COVID, the sort of so-called zero tolerance policy. They wanted to really crack down on cases and send people into isolation in many instances. Uh, why now do you think there's this new approach to COVID within China? Well, we know that they stopped the zero COVID policy, locking down cities and people in their apartment buildings because of the mass protests. But we also know that this strategy backfired, has led to a population with very little immunity. And because the Chinese are using a weaker uh, 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 vaccine, it will not use the Western vaccine, uh, the virus has just been taking off in the country. That's why other nations are worried that the virus in China may be more dangerous, much more infectious. That's why we have to be testing at airports when Chinese citizens arrive. Fred, the New York Times described China's response to the new requirements as muted and indirect. Why do you think they described it that way? Well, I, I think that the world is realizing that China didn't take a response that was effective. And after the bad response it had before, it's still not initiating a serious uh, program to vaccinate its people with vaccines that work. It's basically letting go. It's letting the, the new variants of the virus, an outbreak of people, spread throughout the country and allowing them to travel abroad. And we saw that in 2020, when China knowingly allowed people who were infected with COVID travel to other countries while it restricted travel within China. Hmm. You know, Fred, as we enter, you know, the third year of this pandemic, and of course, people are still contracting COVID, by the way, thankfully, um, you know, they're able to pass the virus, uh, in most cases, just fine. But tell me about the fact that we still don't have the exact details of where this came from. Will that be a priority in this upcoming congressional session for Republicans? It's, it's it, you know, that's a great question. It's going to be a big priority for the new Republican House because the Biden administration has shown no interest in pressing China to cooperate on the origins of this virus. If we had this information, we could be better prepared for new variants of this virus and, and future uh, deadly pandemics. China won't cooperate and President Biden doesn't want to ask.
All right. We're going to wait and see what happens. Hopefully we can get some answers and some clarity again so you could prevent a future pandemic from ever happening if there was a way to do so. Fred Flights, thanks for joining us. Appreciate your analysis. Good to be here. Happy New Year. You too. Happy New Year. No crooked, crooked establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.